From the Sunshine State, this is Tampa Bay's TAN Talk. Good morning, Tampa Bay, and thanks for listening to the Golf Show, guys. Heard every Saturday on the Tan Talk Radio Network. I'd like to welcome in the B-Man. And that ho-ho-ho is for real. This is our first Christmas show at the Golf Show Guys. Uh, remember, you can reach us at www.golfshowguys.com. If your game is suffering, it's always www.golftechniquesforyou.com. I have in a few Santa Clauses, but none like this one. Have you ever had Hollywood come down your chimney? <laughs> <laughs> hey, and a big ho, ho, ho to the little ho at home, my wife. I love Nancy. There's a little humor for you today. I hope it's not too un PC today. We're going to leave uh, you on an island by yourself with that one. <laughs> Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry I can't, Christmas. I can't, believe Merry we Christmas. Made, I can't believe we made it to Christmas. Yeah. They said we wouldn't last a week. That's what they said. They said we wouldn't last a week. And listen, I want a special... Uh, Merry Christmas to one of our biggest fans and a huge supporter out there, Reginald Roundtree. There you go. He's uh, He's been a huge supporter of ours and a lot of fun to play golf with, and we need to tee it up after the new year, Reggie. But anyway, thanks for all your support, too, and everybody else out there. Thank you very much. Channel 10 News, number Channel, one. Number one, he is. And another huge supporter of ours, Chi-Chi Rodriguez and James Poltar. Oh, I love James. Ian, Don't you? Ian Poltar's uh, better-looking brother right. and better golfer. There you go. Yeah. Those folks do a lot uh, for the community, and I uh, uh, am one of that belief that if you do for your community, you're really doing for yourself. That should make everybody happy. Yes, it does. And we like to thank all our sponsors for this past year coming aboard and uh, helping the show out, and we want to thank all them, and you can check that out on our sponsor page. Indeed, indeed. Um, Ennis Brooke, shout out to Ennis and Brooke. Yeah, I love uh, I love the guys out there, Rodney and Ramona out at Ennis Brook, and uh, we'll probably be out there in the March. Chefs, don't they? The chefs, and don't the chefs, oh, the, well, the chefs are the best part. I, You know, Ramona knows what I mean, because yeah. Ramona comes by and has a couple of those little – Bacon wrapped shrimp and uh, some some of that steak, but uh, hopefully we'll be out there for the PGA tournament this they year. Get ready out. for that. And our friends over at Dunn Eaton, Ron and his crew, you know, oh, those yeah. guys are good. West Chase, good to us. West Chase, West and, Chase. And uh, Plantation Palms has mm-hmm. seen the light. They're coming back. Summerfield, on, Summerfield. We love all those guys. The a lot tides. Of, uh, let's not forget Sven and the tides. Yeah, check your mail, guys. There's a little bonus in there. Right, in and the also mail. Craig's Insulation. If you want to save the money and energy today. Give them a call, 727-420-2883, and why not save money starting the first of the year? There you go. Get some insulation yeah. blown in there. They do great. They do great stuff. And listen, I'd be remiss because of the news. I want to wish a Merry Christmas to GLAD, to A&E, and Duck Dynasty, and hopefully all three of that group can come together in the holiday season, and we can find peace and harmony and know that people can have different beliefs and feelings but in the end, if we have a discussion about it, it's really pretty good. So, uh, I, and you know, those are all people that I agree. With, you know, I'm, I'm going to pat, I'm going to patent your hand gestures for for Christmas. Uh, Did you see? Like a hand, you know. It is. It it's like, he I'm watches to too do much. Uh, is that e, ESPN two or one that you watch? Because <laughs> yes. you got the. I got. <laughs> I got. You... Uh, by, by the way, I took. My, I got. I got to tell you, this is funny. Tell so me. I gave Chase the day off. Yes. Yesterday was the last day of school for kids. Jake yeah. is already down. So Jake okay. is 18. Chase is 13. They had to see Ron Burgundy and Anchorman 2. Ah. So we end up going and see the movie yesterday. Mm-hmm. And it's got that stupid humor. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I've got that stupid humor. And the kids have kind of unfortunately or fortunately, we're sitting up there laughing. And then we ended up going to Burger 21. And we just had a great time. It was, I just want to say it was a very fun day for me with my Two youngest sons, and but we had a lot of laughs yesterday. So we're, wow. but they were they brought the end of the movie. They bring in they uh, not to ruin it for everybody, but I will. This is a ruin alert. But 
at the end, they're showing the network. They were going to be a 24-hour network. Right. But then they came. MTV came in, and ESPN came in, yeah, yeah. And, these, and, and BET came in, and, and they brought all these stars. But what people forget, back in the day, which was at the 80s, mm-hmm. MTV was just starting in 81, 82. True that. True that. ESPN didn't really get started till 82, and Berman really showed up when the 49ers beat Dallas with the catch in 82. Yes. And uh, the 24-hour networks. And so that was the humor at the end. A lot of people, my kids and I had to explain to my kids why MTV wow. and yeah. ESPN didn't get really started until yeah, yeah. the 80s. We forget, it seems like yesterday yeah. to us, Doesn't right, it? Kenny? It does. And now look at it. Uh, A&E, marketing genius, uh, to do all this, all the more people are going to be watching and they're going to be, uh, well, I they was, got the marathons and stuff, so I was it's telling, marketing genius. Well, before the show, B-Man and I were talking, and I was telling him, I said, I know Hollywood, only because I've, I've worked out there. It doesn't mean like I'm some expert, but they knew what they were getting, because in 2010, Phil had gone on a, uh, uh, on a rant about how he felt about homosexuality and that sort of thing and that's his belief and and there's been a lot of gays that have come out and said that you know he's right in his beliefs they might not agree with it but he has the right to say it a and e has a right and glad has a right to complain about it but if you're going to get rid of phil or the one guy and keep the rest of the show they're having a marathon this week of Duck Dynasty. They've already done the fifth season, which Phil is in. So how can they really suspend him? And A&E, by doing this, it's blowing up on CNN, Fox, MN, MSNBC, right. yeah. on ESPN. Everybody is talking about it. Exactly. They did $45 million in duck call sales alone. <laughs> that, 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 doesn't include the, that doesn't include the hats, doesn't include the clothes, doesn't include the fishing lures and everything else. And A&E knows this. It's the top-rated a reality and cable show on TV right now. Right before Correct. the holidays. And all yeah. this, and, right and now they're going to, but here's, yeah. the, here's where I think it's hypocritical. They're suspending Phil. The rest of the family says we're not going to go on without our Patriot, yet they're having a marathon that was already planned this weekend. The fifth season will come on next week. They can't edit Phil out of it. So he's truly going to be on. And people that aren't really in the know and say Hollywood realize that they're just kind of saying, they're kind of giving him this. It's kind of like, I, I need to spank you, son, go in the room and then cry a little bit. So it's like I'm spanking you. Well, a lot of that, you know, in the beginning, CBS, NBC, ABC, you could pretty much count on what programming was coming on up until the 1970s. It was only until the 70s when they brought golf on. Right. Uh, on the air, uh, thinking that nobody would watch it. And they had ratings out the roof, didn't know what to do with themselves. Exactly. You know, this sort of thing. Uh, so now uh, they, they they were only doing maybe a handful of tournaments, and they're scrambling the first year to get these TV cameras set up for the next venue, the next venue, the next venue, because this is what people seem to have wanted to uh, to watch. I think in the 70s it probably burned out on Super Bowl, in my opinion, because you had it from the 60s. In the 70s you had it uh, then, and then uh, now the networks, they took a chance, what you're talking about in the 80s with these you know reality shows and, and MTV shows and stuff like that, and it worked. Yeah. I was going to the phone line to talk to Clay Thomas from West Chase. And, Clay, you got a great new uh, program, right? Yeah, Ken, good morning. How are you this morning? Great. Tell us a little bit about yeah. the big program now. Yeah, we just started. This first year we've done it, but uh, we're calling it our season pass. But it's a uh, six-round pass that's just uh, $249 for a Florida resident for six rounds at West Chase. Unrestricted to use them any time. Wow. Um, it's a little... Uh, we want to do a nice thing for our Florida residents to uh, play golf with us all, all year round. Well, if you're a Florida resident, I go. I'm going to be the first one to speak up and tell you that is really uh, inexpensive. That is really inexpensive, people. I take advantage of that. And any time too. Oh yeah. Friday, Saturday, it, there's no restrictions. On oh it. yeah. West Chase, Reggie, and I go out there most times to play. Uh, it is a challenging course. I will tell you that. And the first couple of holes will get your attention. Yeah, I'll tell you, we've, uh, of course, in great shape. Our superintendent has done a really nice job. We had a tough summer, as all you know, how uh, much rain we had and, mm-hmm. and fighting all the problems that come with that. Yeah, uh, I, but, I remember coming out with uh, one of your friends, John Kaleo, and, and uh, the group of coaches from CCC and stuff, and I, 
I remember we came out the one day it was open. Remember that rain that we got uh, in the summer? And uh, we got around pretty good. But what's interesting, Clay, is that um, after I went and saw Anchorman 2 with my kids, we went over to Burger 21, and the traffic was real bad, so we went down and went past the golf course. So I was going real slow, and I was showing the kids the uh, back nine as we're driving down, I guess it's Country Way or whatever it is. And I was telling them, I said, this was the first course I ever played back in 1993. I came out from California because my wife works at, uh, at the business she works at. She, um, they flew us out to see if we liked the area and to look for places to live. And I, I wanted to go play golf. And it was like, you know, I'm coming from California. It's 80 bucks to play golf in 93. And I think I got out there for maybe 15 or $20. And there was hardly any homes out there. You guys were still in a trailer. I don't even know if you you remember (laughs) that. But I've said, this was the greatest golf course. I said, there's water. There was gators. I mean, it was just, it was in great shape. And I still love going out there and play out there. And I do a lot. But it was kind of neat. So I'm telling the kids and a little history tour with my boys because they weren't even born yet. But um, I love the course out there. It's great to go out and play. What's the the, uh, largest gator that you have out there now? We've got, uh, we call him Lloyd. He lives on number three. You'll see him in the winter. He's always uh, sending himself on number three. He's probably up around 10 feet right now. Wow. He's, he's real docile. He doesn't bother anybody. And uh, he's a he's kind of a fixture out there on number three. Yep, wow. that's right. That's true. Number three. The par three. Great, great hole. What else you got going on? Anything else, Clay, out there at West Chase? Good food. Right, great food. You know, Mike's doing a great job in the uh, in the grill, and and things are going great there. We've also got our Advantage Card program, which continues to be a big hit. That's just twenty five dollars for the year to to join, and and that gets you into a lot of special events that we do, but also gets you discounted uh, uh, preferred rates throughout the year. So uh, that's a great program to take advantage of as well. Wow, Clay, can you give a quick rundown of who the uh, pros are for lessons out there for you? Richard Bessie is our head golf professional. Uh, I'm a PGA member as well, and I do a lot of teaching. Uh, but Richard does most of the teaching, and uh, he's our head golf professional, Richard Vecchi. And you can give him a call for uh, for lessons. You can go to our website at westchasegc.com and uh, and see all, all the things we have going on. Well, we appreciate you coming on, Clay. And yeah, uh, thanks, Clay, so much, and appreciate all the hospitality when anybody comes out. They treat you really fair out there, and. Uh, the starters and the guys that get the uh, clubs on the carts and uh, the whole thing. So it's a, it's a great place to go. One of the interesting things, Clay, and I do want to bring this up, your driving range has the floating golf balls. And I had never seen that before. So, you know, the California kid, we don't see stuff like that. We see some wacky stuff, but the floating golf ball thing I thought was pretty cool. Just had to, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people do like that. It's fun hitting at the Island Green, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It's yeah, a lot what's of fun. the key to make it stick? <laughs> <laughs> Got to hit it high and soft. Yeah. yeah. Well, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, yeah, and we appreciate Merry Christmas everything. To all your and crew. Thanks for uh, supporting us, Clay. Appreciate it very right, much. Thank you. Thank y'all. you. Okay. okay. Right. Thank care. you, Clay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Let's go out to the phone lines. We're going to talk to now Doctor K, Doctor Eugenia, and your last name's pronounced Eugenia, Doctor. Kolosinski. Okay, there we go. That's why we call. Her, that's how we call her. That's why I call her Dr. K. Uh, welcome to Golf Show, guys. And we talk a lot about with the tours and stuff, and a lot of it's the uh, mental game, right? Absolutely. First off, thanks for having me on. Congratulations on six months or seven months of your show. Uh, yes, Thank performance you. is largely mental, especially at the very high levels, because everybody's very skilled at the high levels. Whatever level that is, whether it's professional or high school or college, when you're at that top echelon, all of the golfers are highly skilled. And so the thing that separates them is the mental aspect. Wow. You know, I love this, this, this Ph.D. thing. That's the first thing that caught my eye. Um, I've, I've got to go to my oldest daughter in May. Uh, I think she gets hooded in January, but I think she's walking in May. So I have to go out and do that for her Ph.D. So I'm so proud of her. So this is, a, this is huge. Um, I wanted to ask you, from based on what you just said, when I used to play amateurs, and I did this for about nine, nine and a half years, and people would ask me, how is it that you won so many times? And I would tell them that my focus that kept me focused through the 18 holes and all 72 shots was the, the, the smell of baby powder, remembering 
my my daughters when they were very young in in uh, Johnson's baby powder. Is that something of what you're talking about? It can be. It's an aspect of that. It's about controlling your thinking and controlling your focus. And I have to admit, I've never heard that particular technique. But as you were telling it, I was thinking, yes, that absolutely could work because it's a way of keeping you focused and cutting out distractions. Exactly. Am I right? Is that what it was? It's exactly what it was because when I smelt baby powder, I performed well. When I didn't smell the baby powder, I went back down my checklist to go, why didn't you smell the baby powder? Well, you took your mind off, and I was talking to myself like this, so I get myself back to smelling baby powder. Weird. That's what worked for me. Well, it worked for you, but not weird at all, especially the talking to yourself part, because I tell players all the time that you, you have to talk to yourself. Maybe not out loud, but in your head, because nobody else will, especially in a very competitive event. You know, golf, I also work with bowlers, bowling. Those kind of sports aren't ones where there's a lot of trash talking compared to other sports. Exactly. But players aren't necessarily going to help each other out either. If they see another player melting down, they're going to let that person melt down because it's going to be more advantageous to them. So you have to talk to yourself and keep your own mental game in line. Wow, I appreciate that. I see, see there, everybody. B man's not going nuts. He's just trying to win. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 but stop putting baby powder on me. Okay, oh, that's all. I'm, I'm trying hey, to help you, Doctor. I, this is Albert. I want to ask you a couple questions. I saw on um, 60 Minutes uh, this Sunday, which would probably be interesting for you to watch. I'm sure you probably watch every now and then. They're going to show youth football players and youth quarterbacks that uh, the colleges are already looking at and offering, and we're talking 10 to 14 to 16-year-old kids that haven't even gotten out of it. And my, my question to you is, of course, I think that's a bit young, and I coach youth football and high school football, but are you, do you also work with young golfers, uh, being young teenagers? Have you worked with them? And if you have, what's that like with the uh, youngsters? Because I think it's getting I, more involved. I I think they're real because we're and, and let me, I'm sorry to interrupt you one more time. Be, the reason I'm asking is because we are now getting into an area where kids play football year round, soccer year round, baseball year round. Instead of when B man and I grew up, we played all the sports. They're now getting into the individual sport and they're making these kids into these little little robot-type players, and putting a lot of pressure on whether it's golfing, tennis. IMG is, a, is an academy that's got, now got football down there year round. Golf, tennis, and all that. Are you seeing that you're getting calls about helping young 13, 14, 15-year-old kids? I have gotten calls, and there's kind of multiple issues that you raised. The pressure, that's really a separate issue, so I don't really want to address that at this time. But The idea of young kids, particularly teens, working on their mental game, that is really an excellent time to get started working on on these skills because a lot of these skills, really having a good mental game depends on, and here's a $20 word for you, your metacognitive abilities. Metacognitive, meaning being able to think about what you're thinking about. We're not born with those skills fully developed. A little five-year-old cannot do that like an adult can. Those skills develop over time. And they develop right around the teen years. And so that's the teens develop these skills and they want to use them, maybe not consciously want to use them, but they're they're trying to use them in their everyday life. And so this is a that's a really good time to get them on track with learning appropriate mental skills. So it makes sense to get them working on their mental game, adding the pressure, that's that's really a separate thing that that has to be looked at on a case-by-case basis. But, of course, we don't want to be putting too much pressure on them at that young age. But apart from that, the, just simply working on the skills is a good thing. Well, wow. Well, more, you, more, had, uh, you had uh, what I was going to say real quickly, just listening to ahead. you guys yeah. talk, uh, Albert, is the LPGA has a 14-year-old superstar. The PGA has a 14-year-old superstar. Soccer has a 14-year-old superstar. But these are just like one in I don't know how many gazillion. Is that the right thing to do to young kids 
till they come out already at a superstar status at 14 years old? What do you What do you think? Well, that really kind of gets, I think, beyond the mental game issue. I think it's more of a social issue. And I think, no, society is forcing kids to grow up way too soon. And, you know, frankly, a lot of kids, a lot of parents are pushing their kids, possibly because they're trying to live through their kids. And so, you know, why these kids are pushed at such young ages, maybe for the money or the fame or whatnot, that sort of stuff I absolutely don't condone. But kids seem to be developing faster, too. And so it's not entirely surprising that young kids would be showing these talents and then being achieving higher levels than they did at one time. So there's, it's a mixed bag of all kinds of issues in that. Well, you know, you know, it's interesting. I just it's fun talking to a person like yourself. First of all, I really my sister has I like to brag about my sister. She has six law degrees in six different states, and she passed the bar the first time every time. So obviously she got the brains, but you get to talk to me. But I really admire a smart woman. But my question to you also is this. You're talking about how young people are. Do you work other with other people besides sports? Because now we're starting to see these shows like uh, X Factor, uh, American Idol, the voice, you're getting young people that have talent that sing, but they've got to also, there's got to be a mental thing about getting in front of people. Have you worked with any people that have talents outside of sports that are in the arts, art field? Does that make sense? Or is that, that something that you could get into? I have not worked with any, but I, but I could. As I like to say, human performance is human performance. Right. And the the principles that make up a strong mental game in golf or bowling or auto racing, the, the larger principles apply to any domain of human performance, including life itself and in the business arena. And so, yes, those skills, those basic principles apply to any area of human performance. Wow. I like the one when you said about racing, because it says here that you, you can also um, help entire racing teams develop effective team performance. If there's a racing team, because I love NASCAR, so, Something wrong with me, I don't know, but I love it. Uh, surround sound, and I'm going nuts with it. But how do you do a racing team? Because there seem to be eight or ten people in the pits and then the driver. Who do you start with first? Well, a good example that I like to use of race teams, because I'm involved in, in auto racing and then indirectly with NASCAR through my significant other, Buzzy Rudiman, whose son David Rudiman races a NASCAR. Uh, but with a race team, one of the – best examples of a strong mental game is the 48 team, Jimmy Johnson. Right. Just won their sixth championship. And that team, if you ever can listen to the NASCAR radio broadcast during the race, if you listen to that team and you listen to other teams, there is a big difference of how that team communicates during the race. During the race, a lot of decisions have already been made. The car has been set up. Yes, they can do some adjustments during the race, but they can't just go out and get another car. They have to deal with what they have. And so communication becomes incredibly important in that team aspect, making sure that driver is communicating what's going on with the car, the, the uh, crew chief is communicating to the team and to the driver, the spotter is communicating. There's all communication going every which way, and it's got to be effective. And the 48 team, by far, is the best team at that. And the other Hendrick teams are good as well, and some other drivers are good as well. But 48 team, by far, is the best at that. And so taking, the, again, the principles apply to any domain of human performance. When a golfer steps onto the golf course, he is the driver and the crew chief and the spotter. He's everything. He's got to communicate effectively within himself. He is a team of one on the golf course or a team of however many if you're actually playing in a team sport. But on the golf course when you're by yourself, you're a team of one, and so those principles of communication still apply. Well, I, I think, I really do agree. I think golf and tennis, and I, and I guess bowling also, are the, are the three really individual sports where you can really, you can really become a head case. I mean, you know, yep. B-Man and I will even talk about it. I, I'll watch him. He's a great golfer to watch. I remember he was hooking the ball the one day, and I'm just thinking, you know, sometimes you just got to go back to basics. But I understand when it gets in your head. I know putting had gotten into my head, and I went out the other day and just kind of said the heck with it, and I started putting better. But, I mean, those are real head games. They, I'm interested, like you said, I remember when NASCAR, and I remember going to the um, 61 
Indianapolis 500. I was seven, but A.J. Foyt won his first race. I mean, that, this kind of stuff wasn't even around. They, you know, they had a headphone and maybe another guy talking to them, and, and that was it. I mean, you know, none of that. Now it is huge business. And I guess also, Doctor, because, and, and let's not, we have to be realistic with each other here. It is all about the money. And there's huge dollars and endorsements and all that. So I can understand where a person like you can really separate a team from the rest of the field. And it becomes a, a huge dollar sign and endorsement thing also, as does golf and everybody else. Absolutely. I mean, look at all of the top golfers, the top tennis players, top bowlers, and then even the top race teams. That strong mental aspect really sets them apart. And people don't always give the credit that that's due. They attribute it to, oh, the 48 teams got money. Or, oh, this golfer was raised by rich parents. Or, oh, this tennis player went to the X and such academy. But ultimately, they're performing there on their own. And it's that mental aspect that frequently, if not always, sets them apart. All right. So, obviously, you've had some great successes. And without, obviously, you can't name names because you're a doctor. And I, and I see that on TV. Uh, you can't mention <laughs> names. Have you had, have you worked with somebody and they just don't get it? I mean, is it, have you tried to work with somebody and it just, you know, you're just going, wow, I just can't get through the, you know, the, the eight inches between his ears? Typically not. And the reason is I have what I call the five pillars of a strong mental game. It's on my website. And the very first pillar that I emphasize all the time is that you have to take responsibility for your performance. And that's not a popular message in today's culture. People like to blame. People like to point fingers. People don't like to look at themselves to make themselves better. They want to wear magic jewelry or drink a magic potion. They don't want to have to actually do work on their own. And so that, I believe, stops a lot of people right there from contacting me. So the people that do contact me, they understand that they need to do something differently. And so that is the the big key. If you're willing to improve, you can see improvement. And you, you hear various things from people. They'll, some of them will say, oh, I, you know, I, I went to a tournament after our session and, and I won the tournament. It was the stuff you taught me was really very helpful. Others will say that they apply it and over time they see benefits. Others will learn it and understand what they have to do but when it comes down to it, they don't do it, and then they don't see the results. And they often know, I just I haven't been doing what I know I should be doing. So I really can't say that I've had anybody that doesn't get it because that, that little entry criteria, if you will, of you have to take responsibility for your performance, that really cuts a lot of people out right there. If you're willing to take responsibility performance for your performance, then you can see results. I, I, I get that 110%. When I was in the golf business instructing, and there were other instructors that are PGA, and they look so wonderful at the range, they do. And they even had people backing them to put them in tournaments and things like that. When it comes to in a tournament, they just were just ugly beyond belief when they played. And some people were believing in these pros three, four, five years three, four, five years, they never quite were willing. And I'm wondering, is it the willingness, like, say, a uh, uh, you can't help an alcoholic or a drug addict unless they're willing to, to, to take some help. Is it in that same uh, metaphor? Absolutely. You, you, we don't control other people, and you can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. And I have run across that. I've run across people that I have wanted to help very much, but they are not receptive to my help for whatever reason. A lot of times it's a, it's a stigma against psychology. Maybe it's a stigma against being a woman. Maybe it's a stigma that they don't want to have to do something on their own. They just want things to work good without any effort. I don't know what it is, but you can't help people that don't want to be helped. So if somebody doesn't want to be helped, no, I, then I can't do anything. Can't do anything. Um, I think for, <clears throat> for me – and I can only speak for me. You know, everything else is just a comparability. But for me, I believed in what I could do. When you mentioned bowling, I've bowled a 300 game. I believed in what I could do. 
uh, in golf. Everybody knows uh, what I've done in golf, but it's because I believe that I could do it. Is is self belief high on your list? I know you have five things on your website. I'm going to check it later. But is 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 self belief anywhere in there? No, not directly. And that's kind of a touchy subject lately because I really think American culture in particular has gotten very out of balance with that. There's suddenly this idea that if I can believe it, I can do anything, and that's not true. There are things people can believe till the day they die, and they're not going to do it for whatever reason. Yeah, we could list a whole bunch of them. That said, again, it's about balance. If you go out onto the golf course and you say, oh, man, I can't win today, there's just no way. Well, you're probably not going to. So it's a balance thing. It's a, having belief and confidence in balance. Because then there's also the extreme of people think, oh, I can just believe I'll do well. I don't have to practice. Well, that's not true either. So it's, it's all about this imbalance. And so rather than talking about self-belief, I, t- I really heavily focus on doing what you can control because a lot of times people will come to me, their confidence is down. I'm not confident. I'm not confident when I go out on the lanes or the course or whatnot. And I say, don't worry about confidence. You don't have to be confident to win. If they're going to hand you the trophy, they're not going to ask you, wait a minute, were you confident? Or wait a minute, did you believe in yourself? They're not going to ask you that. If you can't perform with confidence, perform without confidence. If you can't perform with self-belief, then perform without it. And so focus on what you control. And if you go out to a tournament and you know you have done what you can do to prepare, you are in good shape, you have eaten well, you you've done all the mental game things that you know you need to do, then you just go out there and you perform and you don't worry, am I confident, am I belief, do I believe in myself? Because those types of things, confidence and self-belief, those are often byproducts of preparing adequately. So when you go out there and you know you've practiced and you know you're prepared, then you can know I can, I can do this. And it's not just some empty set of words. You know that you can do it. And so I'm answering your question in kind of a roundabout way. It, there's a, there's, self-belief is good, but it's got to be in balance with everything else. See, you've, you've already fixed me because my wife tells me things. She says, I know you can do it. And I realize I really can't. So I'm going to just tell her what you told me. There's sometimes, I, cause, honey, I, I really can't do it. I'm just not there. The doc even said so. But no, I'm, and that's when she says, I'm, I don't believe you. She says, I don't believe you. Hey, I do want to ask you something. Your uh, alma mater, uh, University of Central Florida, they're going to the Fiesta Bowl. Have you uh, talked to the team, George O'Leary, any of that? Have you, uh, I have not. No, so you got to be exci- focused on racing. So. Okay, but you got to be pretty excited though about your your school, right? We, uh, Absolutely. I to- remember when we played down in downtown Orlando, and there was just a handful of people in the stands. They oh, were wow. a Division two school too. They wow. weren't they weren't a D one school. This is a, a no. pretty big. Mo- I got a friend uh, that I coached uh, little league football. He's uh, one of the quarterbacks on the team, so it's pretty exciting for me to see a kid that. Uh, uh, has made it up there, and I'm really happy for that school and for Florida. But um, Dr. K, how can people go ahead and get a hold of you? Well, you can always give me a call. My number is 813-695-6456. That's 813-695-6456. Or you the can visit school. me on the website. Go oh, ahead. Okay, and what's the website? The website is www.psychology for the word for eliteperformance.com. Fantastic. I'll get that up on our website and have a Merry Christmas and a Thank Happy New Year. Thank you so year. much. This was a very insightful. I really Indeed, appreciate Dr. it. Indeed, Dr. Kolinsky. I, I appreciate uh, all that you brought to to the airways this morning. That was outstanding. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Dr. K. Okay, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Listen to Kenny. Listen to Kenny already calling her Dr. K. Unbelievable. It's like you. Hey, B. Hey, B. Hey, B. Or, hey. What is it? Tree. Hey, Hey, tree. tree. Oh, my God. You guys are sick.
The Tides Golf Club, a par 72 golf course overlooking beautiful Boca Ciega Bay in Seminole, minutes from St. Petersburg, been a favorite of visitors and locals since 1973. The staff, headed by General Manager, Director of Golf, Sven Nelson, and Superintendent Louis DeVos are dedicated to customer service, and they know that if their golfers have fun, they keep coming back. The clubhouse boasts a well-stocked pro shop. Our casual grill room with full bar is perfect for a relaxing after your round. To reserve a tea time or for more information regarding memberships, call 727-393-8483 or 727-392-5345. Whether you're looking for a course to play for the day or for a lifetime. Come by the Tides and experience their unique brand of golf. Check us out on our website, www.tidesgc.com. All right, let's have a great round today. Whether you're running a golf tournament or just playing a round of golf with your favorite foursome, then Plantation Palms is the perfect choice. Plantation Palms is located one mile north of State Road 54 on Collier Parkway. Just 20 minutes north of Tampa, you'll experience water on 17 of the holes, challenging par threes, and elevation changes, which is different than any other golf course on the west coast of Florida. So call and reserve your tee time today at 813-996-7122. That's 813-996-7122. Chi-Chi Rodriguez Golf Club has a beautiful 18-hole, well-bunkered course is located a half mile north of State Road 580 on McMullen Booth Road. The facility is home of the Chi-Chi Rodriguez Academy. Public amenities include a snack bar and putting green. All proceeds support Chi-Chi's Kids programs. Home of the First Tee of Clearwater, Boys and Girls Clubs, and Big Brothers Big Sisters. Call the Pro Shop 727-726-4673 for current rates, information about leagues and discounts for group play. Check out their website, chichi.org. Chichi Rodriguez now has the Chichi Sports Complex, which includes a fully stocked pro shop, driving range with two 100-foot awnings to provide shade with 49 bays featuring new mats and over 10,000 square feet of grass. To help with your game, you can get great instruction from some of the best teachers in the area. Call for more information at 727-216-6839. 727-216-6839. ParadiseTeaTimes.com is your fastest and easiest online booking website around. Locally owned and operated, they offer hundreds of tea times in these Florida areas, Tampa Bay, Sarasota, Bradenton, and Orlando. With no membership dues or booking fees, you get to spend your money where it counts, playing golf. ParadiseTeaTimes.com is giving you 5% rewards for every tea time booked and sign up today to receive $20 rewards credit. That's right, just for signing up today, $20 rewards credit. Check out our website for courses, members events, Hotel accommodations, stay and play, plus a chance to win free golf. Golfing at your fingertips is ParadiseTeaTimes.com. Motion Pro software for golf. The ability to calculate golf club speed from a video. Lesson creator for coaches that add voice with videos that you can burn to DVD. New email features directly from Motion Pro. Overlay two videos. Review video side by side. Free updates for life, pay once, use forever. And also they have Mac version. You can go ahead and check them out at motionprosoftware.com or you can give them a call at 888-407-9665. Motion Pro. Have you ever heard of a golf show that you tried to meet, but a year to make love that the golf show wanted you to wait? Let me tell you a story about my situation. I was talking to Bernard in Hollywood from the Golf Nation. I was on tour with Kenny. He was a deer in the headlights. He was a deer in the headlights. Bernard, he looks like Ms. Marquis. That's why he shaved his head. Yo, VIP. Let's kick it. Let's kick it. We got the best producer in all of Tampa Bay. Oh man. He writes songs for us. Oh man. And if you need someone for DJing, right? Yeah. DJ oh, and, and video. VJ and video. DJ Call and Bill video. Yep. He is the best. He is the best. He made oh, a wow. he made a video for me. Well, 
we appreciate everybody listening. It's just great. <laughs> <laughs> it's that holiday season, I'm right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't get over that. That uh, I don't know to say thank you or just keep laughing. Be kind. Be kind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, B man, uh, that'll be in his car that's with hilarious. his baby powder. With baby, baby powder. <laughs> and that's um, that's what I had. That's what I did. I, well, it is funny. I smelt it every time before I hit a shower. Well, it's interesting what we do. And, well, I mean, we our little do. habits yeah. and stuff like but that. But see, the point is, I think what she is getting across is that you do something, and this was the something that I did, playing with people that did nothing, yeah. and you can tell that they did absolutely nothing. And let's uh, congratulate. We got uh, some. I want to congratulate Rocco, right, for oh, being... For rookie of the Year on the Senior Tour this year. He was, uh, you know, well, we all remember him from 2008 when Tiger won his last uh, major, which is very interesting right. with his uh, broken leg. And now yeah. uh, here we are five Up years, at, uh, five years later. I can't yeah. believe that was five years ago. Isn't that something? Yeah, it seems like yesterday when Rocco and him went, went toe-to-toe out there. I mean, Exciting it's, stuff. Yeah, it was. That was a great tournament. Was, Tiger made a great putt on the 18th... Uh, tie it and then they tied after 18 holes and, there you go and uh so it was some good stuff and you, the interesting thing is the hawaii the hawaiian uh tournament is ready the tournament of champions is uh about three weeks away maybe less than that That's two right. weeks away and what about the results we have here uh, for the Stuart father Sink. and son the father and son thing was interesting and i was i was digging on bernard langer and his his hot blonde daughter from she's Germany. kind of a big girl for a she's little a big girl, father, but She right? was a very attractive woman, and, and uh, Fuzzy had his daughter out there, and Jack and Gary, and Jack was uh, in the hunt. I mean, Jack's 73 years old, and he was firing at the pins and making some putts. I mean, mm-hmm. it, was, it was pretty interesting to see the competitiveness in him, and which brings me to Tiger, Yeah, because he's, he's going to be 39, I think, at the end of the month. Is he 38 or 39? One of the two is going to be at the end of the month. He's at the December 31st. I think he's going to be 39 birthday. this time. The, the, the interesting thing about Tiger is, and the money that he's got, and Jack's got a lot of money, too. They all have a lot of money. Do you think, could you see Tiger playing with his son in one of these things when he's in his 70s, or do you think he'll ever go... They all say, I'm not going to go to the senior tour, and they end up all going because they love to play. And I know VJ, we were talking about VJ, how he still, he's playing the senior tour. VJ, whether you like him or not, is competitive. Mm-hmm. He practices every day up at the TPC, up at Ponte Vedra, and he still is going to play on the PGA tour along with the senior tour. And Jack played for a few years. Yeah. Uh, Hale Irwin won 45 tournaments on the se- on the senior tour. I wonder if Tiger will ever. I don't in know. It depends on go, whether that 18 majors gets met. It yeah, depends it, on if whether he does that. Yeah, it'll be you know, it'll before be, 45 years old. Because after that, uh, you know. Yeah, it, I think I don't know if Jack has the most majors on the senior tour, but he's won quite a few on the senior tour. I, I've never looked that record. You know, up. it's interesting. I, I I was looking at something last night. And I wanted to know, I don't know why this popped in my head, maybe it's just because it's Christmas. What do millionaire golfers buy for Christmas as gifts? And I looked at a few things, and this is what I found. Okay. I picked three people to look at this. All right. All right. And, and this is sort of, so I didn't know this. Phil Mickelson. What does he buy? He buys a stake in the San Diego Padres. I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't know the own part of it? No. Oh, okay. I, that, that's something I did not know until yeah. last night. Okay. All right. Um, what does Sergio Garcia want for Christmas? You wouldn't believe well, I know what he, loves, he wants for I Christmas. I know he loves fast cars. Uh, no. He wants a mulligan over the Tiger Wood falling out, he said. That's he said, I apologize. I meant it. And, yes, I've done some things for foundations at Christmas. And when they asked, did you do something for Tiger's foundation, he just smiled. So he probably did. See what I mean? For yeah. Christmas. So he probably didn't. didn't want Tiger Woods, similar. He wants, now this is just really crazy, because he wants a mulligan on his systematic program of deception and betrayal. Whether Woods is sorry or not, or simply sorry that he got caught, he knows, and certainly to return to the level of confidence that he had prior to this incident in his invincibility, he would like, that golf gift of re- regaining his game. He wants to go back five yeah. years and have yeah. none of that Mulligan. ever happen. So, so what he's Wait, would done. You have to give but it? what he's done is he spent money. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah. On campaigning, marketing, 
that we, the general public, would sort of give him this mulligan after all these years well, when you see the kind of things that he's been doing. Well, I think he wants the mulligan. I, I, and, of course and, he does. And listen, I don't want to be a, a, a smart you-know-what, but wouldn't he have to get 16 mulligans? 104. Is that how many women? Somewhere. I thought it, was, it probably was. 16. <laughs> but he wants, he but wants I don't for think he wants the public. I think the public comes with that. Yeah. If he had gotten the mulligan and yeah. could and and go from 2008 and say walked away from that without mm-hmm. anybody finding out and say, hey, it's over. Yeah. See, and these are all these things. It's you can't make this stuff up. But, this is out there on but Google. Now, but, but listen, let me just tell you Wikipedia something. Wikipedia. It's just there. But look what it is. Yeah. It's not like oh. it's not like I want a mulligan yeah. because I'd like to maybe not be a drug addict or an alcoholic again because I would have been successful. You would like a mulligan to, uh-huh. I think Tiger wants a mulligan because he wants his life better. And Sergio wants to be a mulligan. Sergio wants to be a mulligan because yeah. he wants his life better. He doesn't want any money, fame, or anything like Is that. Is that something he they need? They're to millionaires, somebody. and they don't do like don't, we do. We just exchange presents. Yeah, but he screwed up. We all want that mulligan where we didn't but, screw up. That but these millionaires, we made. they want something for themselves. Well, but to make, I understand what you're saying, but I That's think. That's like buying your own Christmas present. Yeah, but I think they want a mulligan because they know they did wrong. I, yeah. I think, I understand they want it for themselves, yeah. but we all would like something. I've got a lot of faults that I've done. I make mistakes every day. I've got, you know, whatever it is, my first marriage, whatever it is. I'd like to be closer to my sons, but I'd like that mulligan back to where maybe I could go back out there and, and have. And do that over again. Tiger wants the mulligan because he messed up and he's basically saying, I want to be a better person. Mm. I got it as Sergio says, I wish I hadn't said what I did to Tiger because that wasn't me. I want to be a better person. But I understand it's for themselves. But it's for themselves to make them a better person. That's how I looked at it. Yeah, I think they do. I think they regret Because the money thing, they've got the money. Sergio didn't lose any money over this. No. Tiger didn't really lose any money over this. No. He really didn't. He had hundreds of millions of dollars. He, they've got the money. It was not that I want more money. Now, you and I might go, what would you like for Christmas? Yeah. Well, I would have liked to have won mega millions, and I would have split <laughs> it with three people. Uh, uh, now, that's kind of being t- – but then again, I yeah. think if you and me yeah. – I don't know about Kenny. Kenny's selfish. He you wouldn't, he wouldn't me, split it with us? No, you and me would set up a foundation. Yeah. You would send up a B-Man foundation. Yeah. I would send up a foundation for yeah. kids, for homeless people, and to feed kids. i try to build Detroit well, back up. $400 million. I mean, why wouldn't Well, you? yeah, but I mean, you try to set up foundations, and I've read about lottery winners that have done that. But I think wow. what – but I saw that where Tiger said, hey, I screwed up. Now, he can't say it. He can't say that I screwed up. It's hard for him to say the yeah. words. They had, and I'll, I know you're biting at the bit, but I do have to say this. A great press conference by the President of the United States yeah. yesterday, and he was answering some questions. But the first question was, one of the questions was, do you regret winning the lie of the year and lying to the country? And he kind of danced around the question. It would have been nice to hear him say, you bet I do. Yeah. It was, it was. you know what? Yeah. I... I Go thought Kenny. I was telling the truth, and when I knew I'd gone too far, I wish I'd stopped. It Kenny's, would make Kenny's, him homo- human. Kenny's it, upper lip is going to pop if you don't stop. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's uh, <laughs> we're getting right. I'm just waiting for Bill to start. There we go. What, what's this? End of last, the show. Last. End of the show. It's only five of us. Is it really right. the end of the show? We didn't play our second break. Oh. But Dr. K, we Yo. kept her on so long. B-I-B. Oh, it's 9.55. Go ahead, Merry B-Man. Christmas, B-Man. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Albert. everybody. Merry Christmas to uh, Mr. Van Bata. And we're going to have our New Year's show next week. We're going to have lots of eggnog, booze. Champagne. Hookers. Yeah. We're, I'm Water sorry. I mean, yeah. I mean hookers that, anyway. that don't hit, drive the golf ball straight. Remember to check Guys, us out. You're hooking the ball. Remember to check us all out at www.golfshowguys.com. You can listen to previous shows. If your game is suffering, it is always www.golftechniquesforyou.com, volumes one and two. Merry Christmas and a happy new year to come. And as B-Man always says, put them like you own them. And be safe. Mr. Burgundy.
You are the worst anchor man I have ever seen. Aren't you the guy who lost his job to his wife? Tonight, I interview Yasser Arafat. Why do we have to tell the people what they need to hear? Why can't the news be fun? Yay! What's Joint pain arthritis, osteoarthritis, and degenerative joint disease do not discriminate. Painful arthritis strikes one in five adults, children, and also our furry friends. Protect our joints and let's take care of your pets, too. Lubertson is all-natural oral hyaluronic acid, which is produced in your body naturally. It helps to support your joint fluid. But as you age, your natural levels drop, thus needing help to lubricate our joints. Well, animals are the same. So let's help them out so they can feel great, too. Go to Lubertson.com. L-U-B-R-I-S-Y-N or call 800-901-8498 and use promo code TAMPA for 15% off. West Chase Golf Club in Tampa is the I can't believe it's not private 18-hole championship golf club. It's the golf club with something you thought you'd never find in a public course with its many amenities, including its proximity to the airport, central location, and easy access from the Veterans Expressway. Its reputation for manicured greens, a natural setting, and overall great condition is well-deserved. Both the course and clubhouse have a private country club atmosphere where you can entertain guests or clients. West Chase Golf Club now features a state-of-the-art GPS system with a full-color 3D graphic monitor mounted on each golf cart. Deadly accurate yardages will help you improve your scores and pace of play on the course which winds through acres of lakes, woods, and conservation areas. Annual memberships are available for a flat fee, then just pay cart fees for the entire year. Call the Pro Shop for your tee times at 813-854-2331. That's 813-854-2331. Craig Hill of Craig's Insulation has been in the insulation business for over 40 years and has owned his own company for 20 of those years. Craig and his sons do all of the work, and they take pride in doing a great job for everyone every time. Using only the finest products, Craig's Insulation specializes in re-insulating attics with both blown fiberglass and radiant barrier insulation. They can offer prices that are 50% lower than the big guys because they do the work themselves. When it comes to saving money, insulation is no hype. With Craig's Insulation, an average homeowner can recoup his investment in about 18 months with the money saved on energy bills. Call Craig today at 727-420-2883. That's 727-420-2883. Or email him at craigsinsulation at hotmail.com. That's craigsinsulation at hotmail.com. Don't wait.